Here is an example of contract assets and contract liabilities and recording them with the revenue recognition principle. There are two types of contract assets. The first is straightforward and they're the journal entries you've been performing all along. It's when a company has an unconditional right to receive their asset, usually their accounts receivable, because it's already satisfied its performance obligation. This example is the other type. It's a conditional right. And the company has the right to receive consideration because they've satisfied one performance obligation. But before they can go ahead and bill the customer, they must satisfy the other obligation. And in this example, there's a contract price to transfer both X and Y for $150,000. Both must be delivered before the company can bill the customer. Separately, it can be said that the price for X is $60,000 and the price for Y is $90,000. And when one is delivered without the other, revenue's been earned, but the related receivable cannot be recorded because the contract will not allow the customer to be billed. It's this conditional right. So let's look at what happens when product X is delivered first and product Y is delivered later. When product X is delivered, the sales revenue from that product, because it's separately priced out of 60,000 is recorded. So there's a credit to the sales revenue. But there isn't a corresponding receivable because they're not allowed or not entitled to the receivable until product Y is delivered. But there is an asset because of the contract and because that they're willing to go forward with the contract. When product Y is delivered, the 90,000 in sales revenue for product Y is recorded. Contract assets is now credited because that contract has been completed and accounts receivable is now debited for the total of the entire contract because the entire contract has now been earned and now they're entitled to the 150,000. So remember on conditional contract assets, you have two pieces, the earnings of the revenue and the ability to receive the consideration or the accounts receivable. And that's that journal entry. A contract liability arises because the contract specifies that it is non-cancelable. And as soon as the cash is received, the company who's transferring or selling the product has a liability or an obligation to deliver the product. In this case, the price, the sales price to transfer the product is 11000 and the cost of the product is 8500 So the cash is received first, very typical to your traditional unearned revenue idea. So think of your very first set of adjusting journal entries when you started financial accounting. You recorded the receipt of the asset and that you had the obligation to pay. Well, this is an obligation to provide the service. The same exact thing. So when the cash is received, cash is debited, and unearned sales revenue is credited. That's the contract liability. And similar to what you did when you first had financial accounting, when the obligation is forward, you eliminate the liability and record the earning of the revenue. And that's what happens here. When the product's transferred, unearned sales revenue is debited and sales revenue is recorded. But since it's a transfer of a product, we have to make sure we debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for the cost of that product. So those are entries for contract assets and contract liabilities.